All right, so I got this little wire hooked up here. Let's get up. Get you guys up here, here. We can take a look here. Get back you up a little bit because it's up on the lift. It's kind of hard to focus here. So I've got there's a yellow wire that goes to this light inside. So there's a light that goes inside. I'll show you where it is. There's this lens that goes on here. And that's down here. There's a lens that goes on here like that. Let's see. You guys can see what it looks like. I, I can't see what it looks like, really. But you can see... That doesn't sound very good. That's a buzzer. So you can see there, that's the light. I don't know what that's for. So it's got a light and it's got a, where is it? I'm using my test tool here. A buzzer, I'll show you. So it's got a light and a buzzer. I thought they were in the same circuit, but they're on separate circuits. So that's kind of cool. This is a light that goes underneath the dash. And you know, let's look at that. Maybe we can get it up here where I can see it a little bit better. Dangle it. It goes right here. There's a screw I took out. And I left it loose because I knew I was going to have to work on it. And this light goes right here. Let's just kind of. So we can get it to hang somewhere. So I'm using this uh, like power probe and I'm hitting it with volts right here. So you can see that it lights up. I think, I really don't know exactly how that works. I'm thinking when the lift is on, there's a, there's a power switch on it. And I think when the lift is on, that's on. And then now let me show you the buzzer. There's this little thing here. Right here, this little box right here. And that's probably 6 volt. So I don't think it's going to like 12 volts for very long. I'm trying to hook it up. Hold the phone in. Do this at the same time. It's a little tricky. So that little buzzer right there yeah that sucker and then this right here is a circuit breaker let's see you can see you can't really see very good the lighting is not very good right now but <clears throat> and that probably kills this one here that's hot let's see no it's still got power see push that in let's try this one again one point seven let's see when we push this again yeah that kills the power so yeah there's a circuit breaker right there so we've got hot lead here We've got an ignition one somewhere. I think it's this one. And then we've got the buzzer, which is this one. So what I need to do now is just mark them all. Let's mark them all and then we'll know what's going on. All right, so here's what we're looking at. This is a ground. And this is a completely, I have no flipping idea what that is. Maybe a bad connection somewhere. Maybe I'll chase it a little bit and see. This one is another ground. So I'm gonna have two grounds. And because I hit these, okay, when I hit these with this thing, showing you guys how this thing works a little bit. I'll 
the link in the description if you're interested in one of these. These are pretty cool to have. And if I can hold it and then hit it, you can see it. You see how it's shorted? You can see that? And then the tool went to like, uh, it's, called a, it's called a tool. I don't know what the name is. When it shorts, it, it, it reboots. So, um, so that means this is a dead short. So that's like a ground wire probably. And this one's the same. It does the same thing with this one. Now this one, it doesn't do either. So it's, so when I, it, the only way you can figure this out was with one of these tools. That's one of the reasons I wanted this thing is I hit this with 12 volts and it, I don't know, it, it, it shorted for a second, so maybe, oh, you know what I bet these are? Is this is the lights. I bet you anything, this is the lights. So, I, I don't know exactly how this thing works. But I think, well, hmm. That's an interesting thought. Maybe I'll turn the lights on. All right, that's it. When I turn the lights on, we got 12 volts. On. You can hear it beeping. It's beeping 12 volts. So that's got that goes on with the lights. And what about this one? 0, 0.0. That's ground. So we got two grounds, and this one's the lights. So some sort of head, uh, maybe the side marker lights. Um, your guess is as good as mine. So I think we nailed them all down. We got lights, key, ignition key. This is hot. This is hot um, for the light in the front. Let me just put that on there. That's called uh, indicator light or something. And then we got just our standard 12 volts. So, hmm. Interesting. Interesting how this thing works. So... That's how it was wired. It just makes me question a couple things. So the lift only worked while the engine's running. So the one that's key, that one, probably turned on some stuff. And then there's the 12 volt one here. Just have no idea why it was wired this way. Um, so I've got to think about this for a little bit and then get back to you guys. Okay. This will be fun. All right. I found a place that had these reasonably cheap. Of course they came from another country, but yeah, the one place wanted $5 each for these boots. And I thought that was I just didn't see the point in that. So these ones were about a buck. A little less than that. $10 by the time I got them shipped. Kind of cheap, but they'll work. Maybe the other ones were the same, who knows. Okay, one of the reasons I bought this power probe is for this too. Uh, I wanted this power probe to do this so we can test all these things here. Let's see. Oh, I think that's the wrong one. Let's try this one. Okay, so this one, black is down. All right, let's just do that. Black down. Yeah. 
outrigger. Alright, so we go that way. Well, let's try this one. I must be down. Alright, so this one's black and it's uh, CCW. So this one, it's a little bit too much strain for the machine it's with too many amps I think. Black is up. So uh, black on all of them that way. Black up. And there's no confusion. Cause I got white here, we got other colors, so I just want to make them all the same. Go by the black. Okay. Bring that thing back down. Alright, so I made a button panel off camera. I know the buttons are a little not so perfect, but it's kind of hard to do so anyway i'm not that good with math so trying to figure all that stuff out to get them perfectly s symmetrical and square and anyway got it pretty good though uh and i've wired a lot of this stuff and i'm you know i'm using wire nuts a lot in here because it's just so much easier you can just screw them on and then if i make a mess you know mess up on something i'll just unscrew it and then It'll be fine inside here. You're not going to be digging around in here much. So I've got a couple of problems. This switch here is just completely, look at that. I mean, it's just no good. So this is the one that goes up, up there. Okay. And that one's supposed to show that the lift is perched so that you can operate the outrigger. So I still don't have that wired in correctly. So I've got stuff bypassed to try and... So I've got like jumpers on here to bypass it. Hopefully I'm doing it right. We'll find out shortly. Uh, i got to warm this truck up gone from like 100 degrees down to like 60s or lower 50s 60s it's been crazy so we're gonna let this thing sit here for a minute and warm up
All right, here he goes, nothing. Holy crap. It goes up really fast. I need to turn the idle down. All right, let's try it again with the idle down here. Much better. Still pretty jerky. Well, I'm going to have to do some adjustments on the orifices or something. I think turning down that valve for the downward. I don't think I'm going to try side to side. I think the problem is, is this valve right here, this is for the down speed, needs to be adjusted. So maybe that valve or this one. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's oh, this is the return, isn't it? This is the down. So I don't know how that works, but I'm betting that that is where the problem is. It's got to be better than that. Plus, it's leaking really bad. So I'm gonna have to take that cylinder apart and repair it. All right, let's take the power probe and see what's going on here. I've got. No bolts to there, so oh. Oh, because I don't have it hooked up. <laughs> well, that makes sense. So I need power to that. I can just go from here to here. I don't have it hooked up. Because I don't have that other valve here yet, so anyway, let's try it now. Something's not hooked up right. Try cranking up the idle. Well, my guess is it's probably not got a good ground over there. So I'm going to have to play with this a little bit later. Uh, I'll bring you guys back in. I'm going to take a break right now and then come back at this again tomorrow so I'll talk to you then so now I am running the solenoids at 6 volts so that's they do work better they don't make as much clunky noise and they don't draw so much they draw a lot when they're on 12 volts so they're designed to be on 6 so probably having issues with ground We'll see tomorrow. I, I just, I have a feeling that's what it is. So, 
anyway we'll check you know we've got two grounds right here I might need to get star washers and all kinds of stuff to make it ground really good for six volts it's got to be perfect or it won't work so anyway we'll be checking that out tomorrow that thing I was working on is this thing it had a rubber gasket on it and I just bought one of these things it's called a cam spring cam something <laughs> and I used the original one from here and I just took the thing apart and double netted like here let me get you up close so you can see like that double netted it together and put the spring like that same thing here and I just used an Allen stainless Allen that I had from you guys know where those came from I think from the solenoids so yeah uh, and it works it kind of holds it on I don't know how well I need it to really stay on there for road trips and stuff so yeah that's a concern that it won't stay because these can you can just twist them around you know you can just go around around and around and they don't lock in so I'd be worried about them just twisting on their own but maybe the rubber will help you know if you have tension on it then sometimes it will stay pretty good but I, I probably won't leave this panel on when I go on a road trip I think just to be safe I don't want to lose it so anyway we'll move on to other stuff All right, this was I was kind of afraid of something oddball like this. This is weird. I've done a few of these, not a ton, but usually they have a big nut here and a seal, and usually that thing seals. Okay, the way it looks like to me, and this is weird. This is very strange. Okay, so the way it looks like to me is this one's design. This doesn't seal here and it bypasses. So it uses hydraulic pressure and just allows it to bypass. There's no seal there. That's strange. I don't even know how that works. Because usually there's a seal on this end and that pushes this piston out and keeps it from going back 
Hmm. That's too weird. I bet they don't even have stuff for this. I'd be surprised if they do. It's one of the reasons I didn't want to rebuild them. Yeah, you guys know why. This is different. Hmm. Well, I have no idea how that works. No seal here. What holds that thing from sliding back? I don't know. Maybe both ends of it. Uh, yeah, it still would just slide to me. There's nothing there to make it stay in place. And there's nothing inside the tube. So anyway, it looks like this is threaded here. So all I got to do is get this thing loose, which that looks like it'll be fun. Knock around here with a hammer. I'm sure they have a special tool for that. Hmm. Very strange. All right, I'll bring you guys back in a little bit. Super bug. Alright, so I just got a couple of limit switches. It's about the best thing I could find that would work. I don't know how well they're going to work, but anyway. We'll see how that goes. I took this thing into O rings and things. I was just going to see if they had a tool and they had a little service center next door, so. He said he had the socket or whatever, and I just said, yeah, just put new seals in it, and I'll put it back in. So hopefully it, it'll be kind of expensive route, but, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to have to, if I ruined that little threaded piece on the end, I tried to hammer it around, and it, no way. It's made out of really soft steel, that, that little piston. So I think, I, you know, I really know how this thing works. It's really strange, but I kind of got an idea that I'm not sure, but I'll explain it to you, see what you guys think, you know, because I really don't know how this thing works. It's really weird. You know, it only has one thing going in here. It only has one inlet, and all there is is there's, you can see the hole where it goes in. So there's no other valves or anything. It's just an open cylinder inside here. And it had that metal piston on the end with no seals on it. So it's going to bypass, right? I mean, there's no way you could have it seal when there are no seals there. And then all it had was at the very end that like a cartridge thing uh, that had the seals so that it won't leak it to the outside and whatever. So this is what I think that they do on this thing. I find it kind of strange and kind of over-engineered and weird, okay? So if you see here where this, this is the return, right? Yeah, this one's the return. This is the pressure line going in. So the return has these things where it has this, this pressure valve, which there's one just like this at the engine so it can pressure relief as it builds up too much pressure it just it just relieves it and then goes bypasses it so what I think it does is it builds up a static pressure and I kind of explained this before but this is where I'm gonna go with this I it builds up like a static pressure because this thing anytime I run the function or what it's supposed to do it has a delay so it what it does is I click the solenoid it delays a second or so and then it starts to operate because what it has to do is it has to feel that there's a pressure loss for it to start allowing fluid so it's kind of strange how it works and then up here so this thing has one inlet and three valves 
are three hoses. You got one, this is the pressure side, this is the return, and this is the pressure relief. So what it does is it just pressurizes this thing and constantly puts pressure on it and when it reaches that and when you let off the control okay and it's just uh, and it's just and it doesn't sense that there's that the buttons pressed or whatever how it does that by pressure through this valve okay it starts bypassing and running fluid through and then it runs enough fluid so that it doesn't return let this thing go down I think is how it works that's just crazy I don't even understand that I've never seen hydraulics done like this this is really weird and if this these cylinders which tells me that this cylinder and maybe the others are, are probably you couldn't replace them with generic cylinders because your generic cylinder typically has a seal on the one end and pushes out and then you know it, and then to retract all it would do is just use the weight of that to push it back in you know it would have a seal on one end when it has that kind of a setup where it has just one same thing with here it's just weird it's got a lot of weirdness to it this thing goes in here and returns but you know all I can say is that it, it works so if it didn't work it'd be thank goodness it does I don't know how I'd ever be able to figure it out because it's just that's just strange this pressure relief valve it does it does work but there's always a delay so I click it on that's why you guys see me clicking the stuff and then like in real time I'm clicking it and then I'm I wait like three sometimes two three seconds before it starts to react because what it's doing is it it has to this pressure relief valve has to relieve pressure and then it starts to flow fluid through the valve so it's something like that don't ask me exactly how it works but that's kind of if you can understand what I'm talking about that's kind of as best I can explain it that I can think that it works and again I don't know but it's weird so anyway we're waiting for this thing it'll be a few days so I figured we'll just go ahead and end this on this note and then uh, it said like maybe tomorrow but then it was kind of like well maybe not tomorrow maybe Wednesday so I'm like well whatever you know it's not in a big hurry I'd like to get it done I'd like to see it work but I'm not in a big hurry I don't have a job that's pressing that I got to go to like some of the other guys that might have their stuff in there so got to be respectful to them and in case it takes them a little longer to get that or whatever it is I guess it's a piston at the end really strange how that that would actually hold any kind of fluid when it doesn't really I guess it does rub against the sides it's really soft metal I tried to just knock it around and it was just too soft but so anyway we'll let the sit here for a couple days and uh We'll see what happens, and next time I think we'll have this thing ready, probably to go on. I, I, I got the, I, I got the missing piece I needed for the top. Now the thing is, I do need that thing up in the air to be able to mount it, which is a drag. So I need that piece, and then I need to raise it up. <laughs> While it's raised up, then I got to go up there and and drill holes and actually make new ones for the different style limit switches is what these are limit switch so all it'll do is instead of it being that style it'll just hit the thing and it'll go over like that right it'll go like that so it'll just go come down click and the power's off well that's why I bought two they weren't that expensive they have more expensive ones uh, but they're even that's kind of limited so anyway we'll talk to you next video please like share and subscribe to see your comments and how things are going talk to you later